phẩm đầu tay từ Sympathizer, Cảm tình viên đã thắng giải Pulitzer 2016 cho loại chuyện tưởng tượng và trở thành một trong những tiểu thuyết bán chạy nhất trong những năm gần đây. Và tác giả Việt Thanh Nguyễn được thừa nhận là một nhà văn đương đại quan trọng là tác phẩm thứ nhì trong thể loại tưởng tượng trong văn đàn tại Mỹ. The Refugees là một tập truyện được viết một cách dễ thương nhưng rất sắc bén và khát vọng của những người từ bỏ quê hương mình để đến một nơi khác và nói về quan hệ cũng như là cái ước ao tự làm tròn bổn phận trong cuộc sống của những người tị nạn này thưa quý vị. So, hồi nãy thì tôi uyên phần một có hỏi tác giả sơ sơ về cái cảm nghĩ và sau khi thắng giải Pulitzer cho uh, tiểu thuyết The Sympathizer và anh vừa mới cho phát hành uh, những cái mẫu chuyện ngắn với cái tựa đề là The Refugees, những người tị nạn. Uh, anh cũng chia sẻ là cái cuốn sách uh, mới này với những mẫu chuyện ngắn đã tổ, uh, gọi là cũng uh, tốn tới gần 20 năm để mà hoàn thành cái cuốn sách với những mẫu chuyện, mẫu chuyện ngắn này. Thì cái Chapter đầu tiên mà tôi có hỏi uh, tác giả đó là cái tự đề là Black Eyed Women là nói về một người phụ nữ um, có một người anh older brother người anh Đúng rồi, người anh, anh trai người anh trai qua đời lúc mà đi vượt biên và sau này thì khi mà cô ta thành công rồi thì cô uh, đã gặp cái linh hồn của người anh đến với cô thì tôi riêng tôi thì tôi đang đọc tới trang thứ 9 và rất là hồi hộp và rất là muốn biết cái kết kết cuộc của cái cái chapter 1 này à, anh Việt có chia sẻ rằng là thường thường mà viết những cái chuyện ngắn thì nó khó hơn là viết chuyện dài bởi vì khi mà viết chuyện ngắn á, thì mình phải cô động lại tất cả những cái chi tiết cho nó đúng tại nếu mà anh như anh nói là không có condense cho nó đúng á, thì cái short stories mình đọc nếu mà nó không có có beginning middle end á, thì tự nhiên nó nó không có make sense đúng không anh? Uh-huh. Nên đối với anh cái challenge, cái phần khó là bởi vì viết chuyện ngắn là anh cũng học hỏi được nhiều. Và khi mà anh tới tốn tới 50 draft khác nhau để mà cho một cái mỗi tập truyện một này thì sau đó những cái chapter sau này nó có dễ hơn cho anh hay không? But the other cha- the other stories were were easier I and mean, they were all challenging in different re- different ways but nothing was as hard as as black eyed women and, mm. and I think it was because it was the first story yeah. I wrote and I wanted to I'm stubborn I wanted to finish <laughs> Um, so even after I stopped, you challenge yourself. I challenge myself, yes. right? So, yes. so eventually I had to come back and finish that story, no matter how painful it was. Yes. Và cái chapter thứ nhì, cái câu chuyện thứ nhì đó là the other man. Anh có thể nói sơ về cái backstory của cái um, the other man là như thế nào thưa anh? Yeah, the other man begins in the summer of 1975 when Liam, a Vietnamese refugee, uh, arrives in San Francisco and meets his sponsors there, who are a white man mm. named Parrish and his boyfriend mm-hmm. named Marcus who's, yeah, 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 yeah. named, named uh, Marcus Chan and our Vietnamese refugee Liam uh, has never met homosexual or gay people before and now he's going to live with them but the problem is not the problem he just got he he's been wrestling with his own sexuality he too oh. is gay as well but he's never acknowledged it or oh, didn't realize didn't realize it right. until he has to live with a gay couple in San Francisco very interesting cái idea của cái câu chuyện thứ hai này là từ đâu? Anh có based on someone anh biết hay không? No, but you know, I, I went to school in the Bay Area, so I knew a lot of gay people in San Francisco. So they the share the stories with you? Um, that particular story, no. Again, it was an act of imagination, but it was inspired just by the knowledge that there must be, in all the Vietnamese ref- refugees who came here in 1975 and later, mm. a good number of people who were gay and lesbian. Mm-hmm. So what was it like for them mm. to arrive in this country um, and experience these kinds of things? And I combined that with the refugee story in general, that there were a lot of refugees who came here by themselves to a completely foreign country and had to make a life among strangers. And so I brought those two stories together with Liam. Wow. War Years, go chuyện thứ ba. War Years is the only autobiographical story I've ever written. Um, this story is set in San Jose from told from the perspective of a young boy whose parents run a Vietnamese grocery store. And that's you? That's my, that's my story. <laughs> that's you? And uh, I remember my mother telling me at one point um, that anti-communist feeling was so strong mm-hmm. in the community in San Jose during the 1980s. Or even 90s. Or 90s, mm-hmm. um, but I was there in the 1980s, that uh, there were efforts to um, get the shopkeepers to contribute money to anti-communist causes, oh. and if you didn't contribute they money... They would call you? Yeah, they'd call you communist. And so that was part, that, that's the basis for the story. What happens when this very hard-headed mother who runs the store meets a hard-headed woman who wants her money for an anti-communist cause? Wow, I can't wait to read that chapter mm-hmm. too. 
I love you to want me. Cái tự đề nó cũng rất là hay cho một cái mỗi chuyện ngắn thứ từ thứ năm. Do you know what that title refers to? Em đang nghĩ tới cái tình yêu trai gái nhưng mà không biết có đúng hay không em có <laughs> From the song Lobo, I'd love you to oh, want me. Oh uh, yes, okay. Uh, but the story is about two older Vietnamese people living here in in Garden Grove, um, and the uh, the husband's a professor and the wife is a librarian. The husband starts to lose his memory. He has Alzheimer's, and he starts to call her by another woman's name, mm -hmm. and she doesn't know whether this is really a, a woman from his past that he was in love with, or whether it's simply his uh, Alzheimer's playing tricks on him. Mm. So what is she going to do? Và cái đó inspiration từ đâu thôi anh cái cảm hứng khi mà anh viết cái 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 câu chuyện I love you to want me. I well, you know, Alzheimer's is a big problem yeah. in our society and for Vietnamese people now too. And I just wanted to explore what would happen to any family, any any couple when one of them would be stricken with Alzheimer's and I had to come up with a device, mm. and the device in this case was: What if your not only what if what if your partner mistakes you for someone else, which is common when you have Alzheimer's, mm. but what if that partner mistakes you and calls you by the name of someone? Mình không biết. Mình không biết. Mm. Yeah, and someone he he might he may have been in love with as well. Mm. That's heartbreaking. Yeah. Well, nhưng mà em thấy là anh nói đúng người Việt Nam mình bị cái bệnh đó rất là nhiều, mà nhiều khi người vợ hay là người chồng, it's hard for them. Yeah, it's always hard, and then compounded by the possibility of an affair mm. or deception, it makes it worse. The Americans. The Americans is actually about a uh, an American, not a Vietnamese person, but an American who was a bomber pilot during oh. war, during the Vietnam War, and he and he married a Japanese woman, and they have a, a daughter, and she decides to go to Vietnam to teach English to uh, the Vietnamese, mm. and the story is about what happens when he goes to visit her in Vietnam and they have a very troubled relationship with each other and it takes that relationship takes place then against the backdrop of his history because he's black he's African American and th what it meant to be an African American in the American military during that time and to be a bomber pilot dropping bombs on on Vietnam Em thắc mắc là cái cái mẫu chuyện thì Americans anh có nói chuyện với ai anh có rút kinh nghiệm hay là chia sẻ phỏng vấn ai để mà có cái ý tưởng viết cái mẫu chuyện ngắn thì Americans hay không um, I had to do research on what it meant to be a bomber pilot and the plane and, and, and those kinds of things. And I had to do research on demining because mm. she falls in love with this um, half Vietnamese, this Amerasian young man who's working to demine uh, Quang Chai. Mm -hmm. And I visited those demining sites. Um, so the story brings in a lot of Vietnamese, his, Vietnamese history about the war. Yeah. But the, re, the human relationships, as always, are things that I had to imagine. Nhưng mà khi anh nhắc đến cái cái tình cảm con người với con người human relationships nó rất là complicated. Yeah. Đúng không anh? <laughs> that's what the uh, that's what that's what a writer is supposed to do, <laughs> right? We have to imagine human beings. We have to empathize with them and try to uh, think about what we, what we would do or how we would feel mm. if we were this other person. Wow. I, anh nói như vậy làm cho em nghĩ đến là nếu vậy là những tác giả những nhà văn đó, bởi vì họ có nhiều cái trí óc tưởng tượng khi mà họ viết truyện đó. You can be a good actor too, right? Tại vì khi anh là một tài tử, một diễn viên thì anh cũng phải imagine trong một cái nhân vật đó anh phải là người đó, anh yeah. đóng mới ra. Yeah. So yeah. you have to see from the other person's perspective. You have to be able to feel what they feel, and that's a very difficult and challenging thing to do. Sometimes it's a very painful thing to do to try to mm. imagine the pain or someone might be going through. Um, <coughs> but that's our task as storytellers is mm -hmm. to try to imagine that so we can convey that to readers and get the readers to feel, feel as well. Yes. And the book is titled The Refugees, and the reason why is because I feel that what we went through as Vietnamese refugees mm -hmm. is important to tell other people because most Americans don't know what Vietnamese refugees went through. Mm -hmm. People in Vietnam don't know what Vietnamese refugees mm -hmm. went through. And our experience as refugees uh, must have some similarities to what other refugees are going through mm -hmm. as well. Em nghĩ là as refugees, khi mà anh nhắc đến refugees thì mình là người tị nạn người Việt Nam. Bây giờ mình nhìn những cái cảnh của những refugees như là người uh, Iraq hay là Syria đó. Anh có thấy có nó có những cái similarities hay không thưa anh? I think there are similarities in the fact that we, we are all people who were not wanted. We came from countries uh, ravaged by war. Mm. We were forced out and we were people in uh, desperate circumstances and needed help. Yeah. Um, and 
the countries that we wanted to go to oftentimes didn't want us. Mm -hmm. So now it's hard to imagine that in the, in the United States because the Vietnamese Americans have been very successful, or many of them have been successful. It's hard to remember that in 1975, mm -hmm. the United States did not most Americans did not want these people, didn't want us. And so I look at what's happening today with uh, anti-Syrian feeling or anti-Muslim feeling directed at re refugees from, from Islamic countries, and I think, I don't believe it's true that we're, that these people are fundamentally different than the Vietnamese just because they're, they, they follow Islam. Uh, but the xenophobia that, mm. that so many people are, are subjected to makes them see these people as, as very threatening yeah. when most of them aren't. And I, I mean, cái đó là the worst and the the hardest feeling. And and you know, because I guess mình là tị nạn, những người tị nạn bên tay đơn nạn mình hiểu được cái cảm giác của một người tị nạn như thế nào khi mà mình không có nói được cái ngôn ngữ của cái nước uh, nước ngoài. Yeah. Mm. Fatherland. Fatherland is based on a true story. Actually, mm. I met this young Vietnamese American woman, and she told me um, that she had fled Vietnam as a refugee with her mother but they had left the husband or the father behind. Mm. And they had left with the mother and three children. Năm mấy anh? Probably 75. Mm. And the father came out, came out of prison and he remarried another woman and he had three more children in Vietnam and he named them after the first three children who had left for the United States. Mm. And I thought, that's an incredible story. I I'm too buzzed to hear that story. Really? Yeah. But it didn't surprise me, because I, thought I could totally see, I could see this happening to Vietnamese people, and I could see a man doing this. And so the story is based on that. What would happen if one of those children from the United States came back to Vietnam to meet her family uh, and to meet the, the sister that, that is named after her? But it's told from the Vietnamese uh, girl's point of view. Yeah. And we're looking at a Viet Kiều who comes back and says, she's very successful, mm. but it turns out she's not. Mm. Wow. Anh cứ tính là cái cuốn sách that sympathizer trong tương lai anh sẽ làm thành phim hay không cho người ngoại quốc coi và hiểu cái, cái những câu chuyện như này? I would rather ha have it be a TV series. Oh. So we're, we're negotiating about that because I think I watched a lot of TV when I was writing The Sympathizer. I watched a lot of um, cable television like The Sopranos and The Wire and the structure of these television shows influence the dramatic structure of The Sympathizer. So I think it would make more sense as a TV series. And if it was a movie, I'd have to throw out half the novel. It's too, com <laughs> it's too complicated. <laughs> so I want the extra time that a TV series would give us. Makes more sense. Yes. Chúng ta đang trong cái mùa Tết là gọi là Year of the Wooster, năm đinh dậu, thì không biết là anh và gia đình có ăn mừng, có, 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 có celebrate Tết hay không thưa anh? Và tính làm gì năm nay? Well, my parents live in San Jose, so we're going to fly up to San Jose on Sunday to bring my son home. He's three and a half years old, hmm. and he's, you know, every time we bring him home, he has to wear the áo dài, you know, and... Uh, khăn đóng đó gọi là yeah, khăn đóng, khăn đóng đó. Đó. Yeah, khăn đóng. Đóng. yeah. And, and uh, I bring him home so that he can see his grandparents, but that he'll absorb a little, uh, some of these Vietnamese customs. Oh. Cảm ơn giáo sư Việt Nguyễn rất là nhiều. Thưa quý vị, đó là buổi nói chuyện đặc biệt của chúng tôi và cảm ơn quý vị rất là nhiều. Đến đây chúng tôi xin trân trọng kính chào tạm biệt tất cả quý vị và xin kính chúc tất cả quý vị có một ngày cũng như là một năm đinh dậu thật là hạnh phúc và bình an.